today on Real Life, Healing the Hurt That Won't Heal. Karen Ellison discusses healing from abortion wounds. Also, do you have fear of missing out? Don't miss the Sister to Sisters response. Plus, Bishop Lauren Mann discusses the Holy Spirit's empowering to be a witness. That's today on Real Life. Hello and welcome to Real Life, this special place where we come together in God's presence and feel His love learn about his perfect plan for our lives and where we can encourage one another. I'm Tom McGuffin, I'll be your host and joining me on the program today, as always, Sydney hey. Goldman <laughs> and Amy hey. Schaefer. Thank you so very much. It is a delight to be with you. It is a delight to be with you. We always like to have the Word of God as the power and anointing in this hour that we gather together. And this comes to us from Psalm 32, a Psalm of David. And it says, what happiness for those whose guilt has been forgiven. What joys when sins are covered over. What relief for those who have confessed their sins and God has cleared their record. Praise God, praise yes. God, praise God. We are forgiven. Yes, for all have sinned mm. and fallen short of the glory yes. of God. And I tell you what, thank God for grace. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for the cross that when we receive it, it Christ as our Lord and Savior, our sins are forgiven. They are gone and That's he right. remembers them no more as far as the East is from the West. So our sins are just wiped out. It's amazing. Oh, it is. It amazing. is such a hard thing to really grasp when you sit and think about it. Just recently, I'm just thinking about like when the Bible says, new mer His mercies begin new every day. I mean, if you really think about all the things that we go through, all the ways that we mess up and that God is just in through the blood of Jesus wipes it away. I mean, that is just astounding to me when you just sit and meditate. Like that's how good our God is, mm. that he yeah. forgives us no matter how far we strayed when right. he wipes our record clean. I mean, we got some... I mean, if we wrote down everything, it's just amazing that it doesn't matter what it is, that his love and his blood covers even that. It's amazing. Right. He knows us by name. And I, I just have to, can I share something, a little little footnote, little little thing that we're celebrating in our family. 46 years ago today, I was drafted by the Cleveland Indians. And God changed my life. It would be three days. I wouldn't graduate. It was a Tuesday back in 1973. And I wouldn't graduate from high school until Friday, 17 years old. But I got to tell you, God had something more in store for me than being a ball player right. because it was actually three years later as a ball player that he gave me a new life. And I yeah. found out what it meant to be born again and spirit filled. Praise be to God. So we just say, thank you, God. Thank you, God, for that forgiveness. Thank you, God, for that blessing. And that's why Jesus came, that we might have life mm. and life more abundantly. He didn't come to the world to condemn us. No. To put, so if you're feeling condemned, if you're feeling That's oppressed, it. if you're waking up every day thinking about your sins, maybe that is the accuser of the brethren coming after you. Once you've given your life to Christ and your sins are forgiven, you wake up with a new mindset. <laughs> you wake up in Brand freedom. You're not, you're not held captive to sin anymore. You're That's not right. imprisoned to yeah. sin. Mm -mm. You're free. And whom the sun sets free is free. Free yeah, indeed. indeed. That is so good. And even, you know, when he forgives us, because sometimes, you know, people can take it a little like, oh, I can do anything. But it just makes you want to even just give your life to God even more. And like there's times, you know, you spend time with him and you meditate on his word. You're like, you know what? I want to stray away from the things that I used to do. That's the most beautiful part about having a relationship with oh, God. Yes. It's not just yes. like, okay, I'm atoning your sins. But he's like, I want to walk it out with you. I want the Holy Spirit. I've given you the Holy Spirit because he gets to give you that power so you can walk out that sanctification, which is a progressive work that he does in Oh, it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> It is for freedom that he set us free. That's exactly Amen. Right. And that is what our guest coming up, author Karen Ellison, is going to be teaching us healing the hurt that won't heal. Guys, I'm telling you, freedom for the abortion wounded and help for the church that they fear. Stay tuned. We're going to get into some deep discussions and it's going to help you. Yes. Yeah, definitely looking forward to that. And then we have coming up a little later is we have Lauren Mann and he's going to talk more about the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is sometimes the most misunderstood member of the Trinity. So we're going to break it down so you can walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. And then on Sister to Sister, we have a nice little segment. Do you have a FOMO? I didn't even know what FOMO. that was. 
Didn't even realize what that was, but just a feeling like you're gonna miss out. Yeah. Okay, well, no. Well, you don't wanna miss what the sisters have to say about missing out. Hello and welcome to this segment of Sister to Sister here on Real Life. We are five women that bring the word of God to the problems of the world. And we really do bring it. And we have Tiffany Gilbert with us today. Thank you, Tiffany, Thank you for, for joining the sisters. And we're going to jump into this question. It's going to be a good one, too. This is, this is a good one. Do you have fear of FOMO? And what FOMO is, fear of missing out. Are you afraid when someone doesn't invite you? Are you missing things? Amy? I really had to think about this. Really, I had to chew on it like over a day and overnight because, you know, I think it comes from the whole social media world. They're all together. They're here. I'm not. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to miss out. I'm kind of like, I don't care. Who, if they don't want me there, then they're, you know, that's their loss. But I do kind of have a fear of missing out on huge opportunities that God gives us and if I don't step out in faith and I leave fear keep me trapped or I have a fear I don't want to look back and let any kind of fear have controlled my life and missed out on God opportunities and a fear of taking that huge step of faith that could cost you everything that you could have to lay down your life for. I, I don't want to miss out on those kind of opportunities. So that's kind of my FOMO. That's good. And that shows how confident you are in yourself. Mm -hmm. Because when you think of fear of missing out, you do think of the social media and the people that are all at this party or this park or why wasn't I invited? Mm. I feel like that's such a better Christian answer than mine. Because <laughs> <laughs> mine is faux crow, fear of chocolate running out. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, seriously, I thought about it and I'm like, I do not have FOMO at all. I'm actually the complete opposite. Like I actually feel like the more people are like, attracted to something or involved with something, the more I'm like, I don't want to do that. Yeah. Like the more I'm like, the more people like something, the more I don't like it. Like <laughs> I'm, I'm just like, I like things that are unique and individual. And I'm like, the more everybody else likes it, the less I like it. Like I just, I, I do like, you know, big events and things that like that, but I, I don't have a fear of missing out on it at all. That's good. That's real. Yeah. You're speaking yeah. truth. Yeah. Yep. And I'm sure people that are watching feel that way too and mm -hmm. feel the way Amy feels. So and true. people might feel how you feel, Tiffany. That's right. Well, Amy, I, I, when you were talking about that, I was thinking about myself too. I went through a transition from no kids to kids in ministry. Yeah. And so when I had kids and my focus was on them, I really felt, I, I talked to another uh, pastor friend of ours, and I said, I just feel like I'm missing everything because I'm always in the back mm -hmm. with them. You know what I mean? Or I can't yeah, go yes, to this ministry good. event, or I can't yeah. go to this engagement. Really yes. And um, so, you know, one of the things that she said to me, she said, you have to focus on what is your ministry now. So if your ministry is the nursery ministry, yes. then you, you know, you go 100% full force into that ministry because there's going to be other women in there that need to be ministered to. Right. Right. You know, so I did have that. And it's getting a little bit easier. The, the older that they get, the right. easier it becomes. Right. And, and just to explain, Tiffany Gilbert is Jay Gilbert's wife. So Tiffany is a pastor's wife. So when you say, yes. I feel like I'm behind, yes. you're kind of the wind underneath Jay's wings at this point. This point in your ministry. Mm -hmm. Well, that's thank right. you for being yeah, windy. Yes. Okay, okay. Well, you, you aren't behind anybody's wings. You are the eagle. What do you have? Thank you. Wow. Do I need to say anything? Oh, gosh. It took a long, hard road to get, feel self-confident. And still, I depend on the Lord. I go at night reading scripture that, that you're in the way, the truth, the life, that my heart is resting in you. Um, so I have to say this about the fear of missing out. It's like we were talking about many times about focusing on ourselves. 
And uh, I think not only fear of missing out, but even our children missing out mm -hmm. on something is mm -hmm. becomes even greater. Oh, they weren't invited to this. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're not on this team. They're, you know, we, we focus on missing out. And I think as the sisters and Amy was saying, we miss God's will. Mm -hmm. That's good. And we have to realize, and I think at this point, because of my age and a lot of things that I went through, I finally got to the point of saying, God, I don't want to miss your will. Because mm -hmm. missing out on, this was a distraction mm -hmm. from focusing on what you had for me. Mm -hmm. And when I was com contemplating going to law school or not, I was scrubbing my mom's floor. My mom, mom worked full time and paid for educations and so on, and my dad. So I said, I'll do your housework. I said, I don't care what I do. If I have to scrub floors the rest of my life, I want to know what your will is. And I'm crying and I'm wiping her floor and not knowing God answers. That's right. Yeah, that's because we humble ourselves to say, all right, whatever you want, I'm going to go that route. That's so, right. I so love it. And you know, just, just to end with this, just what Roxanne said, if you missed something, God has something better. Mm -hmm. And really, it's mm -hmm. just that Romans 8, 28, which is one mm -hmm. of the things that I live by. Mm -hmm. You know, all things work to the good. So if you missed it, you're going to do something better. Mm -hmm. But nothing's better than watching the sisters on Real Life. Oh. We'll see you next time. Hey, FOMO, fear of missing out. Tom, do you ever deal with FOMO? I used to. Yeah. I used to. Uh, when I was young, I, I, because I was a pitcher as a ball player, I was the center of attention. And so that translated really in the early years of my ministry that, you know, I was very comfortable being in the center of attention and, and, and you know, being the one that I controlled the tempo of the ball game. Mm -hmm. If I held that ball, everybody else on that field had to wait on me. Wow. And, and I kind of translated that into my, my theology or the way that I would act. But praise be to God, you can teach an old dog new tricks. Yeah. And praise be to God, I, 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 I just have such a freedom now in, in ministry. And my desire is only that the gospel is shared. Yeah. And I don't have to be the one any longer to be the one sharing it. And, and if God facilitates that in you, if God facilitates mm -hmm. that in you, if I'm involved in another ministry and, and God facilitates that mm -hmm. in some of the other people, praise be to God. And I just have to say as a way of right. testimony with Lucy, oh my gosh, how God uses her mm -hmm. in the ministry. I'm the one, I'm yeah. kind of that tip of the iceberg that's yeah. a little more visible, mm -hmm. but it, it, Lucy is the one that God empowers to facilitate. Oh, <laughs> literally, literally. That's really good. That's a revelation, Tom. I mean, I wonder how many people really struggle with that their entire life and never get the victory. Right. So, wow, right. I'm yeah. learning a lot. That's, that is really good. So what was it my spirit just watching um, that piece is what's your measuring stick? That's what God was speaking to me because I think whatever your measuring stick is in life and how you compare yourself to others, then you're always going to be, you know, competing with that. And so for That's me, right. I just really got as this release me and I'm just at this place with my husband and I because he'll be like, all right, Sydney, you know, this is where God is calling you right now and just be, be comfortable where it is right. and just not move because when you try to step out or ahead of yes, God, things right. get a little jacked up. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, if you're struggling with that today, if you're like, you know, you feel like you're missing out, you know, just want to encourage you. You can call our prayer line. We always have prayer partners available that want to talk with you and walk with you because we know that sometimes in our world and social media and everything that's going on, you can feel like you're missing out, but just know what God has for you is for you. Yes. And that's always given me that's comfort. It. Right. It. And stay in your lane and let them worry about their own lane. <laughs> well, when we come back, our next guest brings healing for deep wounds. We'll be right back. Did you know that you can take CTVN with you wherever you go? Just subscribe to Cornerstone Network on YouTube. 
That's all you have to do to enjoy hundreds of great videos from all your favorite Cornerstone shows, all on the go. Real life interviews, the best of the best of origins, and music from the best Christian artists, all with one click. So make sure to subscribe and click the bell today and get ready for a life-changing message for wherever life takes you. Friendship is what we're all about here at Cornerstone, and we want to find out who you are. Our new Friends Club is a place to get to know us better so we can learn about who's watching us. If you've never reached out to us before, we have a book gift to welcome you to Cornerstone. You'll also receive our monthly newsletter. Just call us and tell the prayer partner you'd like to join the new Friends Club. They'll also pray and intercede for you and your family. Call us at 888-665-4483. Connect with us today. Oh, you got to have friends. We do love friends here at Cornerstone and we'd love for you to be our friend. All you have to do is to call the number 888-665-4483 and say, I want to be a friend of that ministry. I see the move of mighty God. And we'd have a gift for you. We have one of these wonderful books that will give the excellent guests that we have on the program. And we'd love to give you one of these books is just saying, we're glad that you're a friend of Cornerstone TV. And now a very powerful Powerful interview with Amy. Karen Ellison is the founder and president of Deeper Still, and her new book, Healing the Hurt That Won't Heal, helps bring freedom to the wounded. Karen, welcome to Real Life. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. Wow. Okay, so he I'm trying to picture healing a hurt that won't heal. What do you mean? Yeah. So, you know, a lot of times the implication of that is why is this hurt not healing? Like what is it that's unique about this kind of wound that you can try all kinds of self-help, you can talk yourself, try to talk yourself out of it, you can try to do things to make up for how badly you feel about yourself. But what we really wanna to get to, why is it not healing? Yeah. And this is an abortion wound. When you have an abortion wounded heart, there is only one person that's going to be able to heal you, and that's Jesus Christ. So that's really my message here is um, there's no other way to really come to lasting healing and lasting freedom mm -hmm. except through the cross and the blood of Jesus Christ and his redemptive work. Amen. So tell me your abortion story and why it's at the front of your heart. Mm -hmm. Well, um, you know, abortion became legal when I was just in junior high school and so I really didn't really understand abortion that much. I didn't think I needed to understand it. It was kind of irrelevant because I didn't think it would ever be relevant in my life. And I grew up in a Christian home and so I had lots of Christian values, but abortion was not really talked about in the church, mm -hmm. uh, certainly. And so even, so by the time I um, was in college and I was at a Christian college, I was a Christian, and just the different ways that the enemy had brought deception into my life, um, deceiving me into thinking you could be, you know, uh, spiritually married without being, or, or physically married without being legally married. And so right. there's kind of a lie that kind of I bought mm -hmm. into in the first place. Mm -hmm. But anyway, when I found out that I was pregnant, um, you know, I did not, first of all, it was a total shock. But and secondly, you're how old? at this point, I was 21 at, at that point. And, so, uh, but my, I did not have a lot of, uh, it's not like I had a lot of pre-ideas about what I would do, because it all was a shock. But through a, a series of what I would call just pressures, pressures from my boyfriend at the time, pressures, um, just societal pressures, or as a Christian, just feeling what, you know, that whole, what are people gonna think? You know, the whole shame thing. I was already ashamed and, and uh, disappointed in myself. So ultimately, I feel like I yielded to what other people thought would be the best solution for me. And so that's when I yielded to have an abortion. It was in the city of Pittsburgh. It was this city here. Wow. And, um, you know, uh, and that was back in 1981. And even though we don't know what we know today yeah. about a, a, um, the development of a baby's in the womb or even really what the abortion procedures are, um, Certainly that day, I learned things that I never even conceived uh, is what women go through when they have an abortion. Can you uncover some of the lies that we're told mm -hmm. in society? Like, oh, it's no big deal. It's, it's mm -hmm. just a tissue. Yes. It's not even a fetus. And this won't hurt you. There'll be no emotional pain. You'll be fine and you'll just carry on with life. Yes. Abortion is marketed 
as first of all, it's a physical surgical procedure, or it could be a chemical procedure. But it's, you go in pregnant, you come out, you're not pregnant. Now they don't really talk about what pregnant is. You're not shown uh, you know, fetal development. And you're not really given facts. I mean, there will be things like, this really won't hurt that much. There's things like, this is safe, this is a safe procedure. And there are uh, things like, um, you know, you might have a little hormonal, you'll have some hormonal adjustments afterwards. So you, some women experience a little depression, kind of like postpartum. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's going to be over soon. Honey, you can get on with your life. You don't have to delay anything. Uh, you just, this is a little blip in the road and you get on with your life. Mm -hmm. That's how it's marketed. Mm -hmm. And the truth is? And the truth is, it's everything but that. That you just began a road of a downward spiral. Mm -hmm. You just took the first step in choosing death. And when you choose death, death begets death. Wow. And so, so for myself, I began to watch things disintegrate before me. And the way that you interpret it, because now your heart condemns you. Now you're already feeling the guilt, the shame, and all that. Uh, so that any, anything that happens to you from that point on, any trial you might, uh, you interpret it back as, I brought this upon myself. And so you get caught in a spiral of um, self-condemnation. And I think to, for me, I, I would describe it as abortion seizes your identity. Hmm. So everything, it's, so it becomes your, you know, part of your identity is I'm a woman who had an abortion. Wow. It's not like it's apart from you. It becomes ingrained in you. It becomes part of you, who you are. So it affects your decisions. It affects how you relate to people, the level at which you'll relate to people. You have a secret to keep. Like, so my whole life, I didn't have a secret to keep. All of a sudden, I have a secret to keep. And you spend your life managing how to keep your secret wow. or how to deflect it. Or if you get into a conversation, how am I going to escape from this? Wow. And so you spend your whole life managing and stuffing down and then interpreting everything that happens to you is through the grid of I deserve this. Wow. In your book, it's full of testimonials of women all ages sharing their story. And I had to read this little poem sure. from a woman, and you can tell me about yes. her. She said, I walked down the hall and into that room. That room for hundreds became a tomb. What was I thinking? Why didn't I run? I lay on the table. The murder began. The sound of the suction, a motor that hummed. So soon it was over, this life just begun. There were four in the room, doctor, nurse, mother, and child. Three walked away and one forced to say, never to see the light of day. Isn't that beautiful? <sighs> see, a woman like that, that's a precious woman who have came through one of our retreats um, just a couple years ago, and she's in her 70s. Wow. She had her abortion, you know, 40 years ago or 50 years ago, whenever it was, but she lived- Still carrying. Yes, yeah, she was carrying that and living that, uh, just living in that uh, self-condemnation. And she too had a series of tragedies that began to befall her. And, but she still, uh, you know, you still th think that's where it began. It's when I took the life of my child. And so for her, for healing and restoration, the first step, as it is for everybody, is you gotta come out of the dark. You gotta bring it into the light. Mm -hmm. I could not even say the word abortion. I couldn't even say the word, and I find that that's true with most women. Until you get your voice back, it's almost like the enemy has a gag order on you, and wow. it's almost like you're choked, you know? Until you begin to uh, walk in the light, walk in the truth, confess it, give it over to the Lord, and then the enemy begins to lose his grip on you. Wow. And then you begin to have the authority to speak the truth. Mm -hmm. and, and so for me, it's like I could just uh, receive my own personal healing and go on with life, or, but the Lord's invited me. He's like, well, can you, can you do a bigger story with me? Can you help reach out and those others who are suffering and in silent torment, can you invite them and say, I'm inviting you into the light. I want to heal you and set you free. Wow. That's the heart of this savior. Yes, he wants women to be free, that's men right. to be free, because there's be also free. the father yes. of the child that's struggling. So you've come, you've come and you've acknowledged, I have had an abortion. You're telling a friend, how does the healing process mm -hmm. begin now? What, what happens? What does that look like? Mm -hmm. I think one of the things that's important to understand is that forgiveness is just the beginning 
of the healing process. Wow. Okay? So a lot of times for Christians, we believe, well, forgiveness is the first, the middle, and the end. It's like all they have to do is ask forgiveness and I'm done. I'm good. I'm moving on. But they still, even though they might say, I believe the Lord has forgiven me, they're still living. They're, they're not able to talk about it. It's, they're still in bondage and, and they can't understand why am I still in bondage when I know mm -hmm. I'm forgiven. Right. So I say, see forgiveness as your debt has been paid. Wow. Okay, Jesus Christ mm -hmm. paid the debt. So you're no longer being held accountable for the sin that you committed. But you have a wound that needs to be healed. It's yes. like if you have a surgical procedure, you can take out the cancer, mm -hmm. but your, your body has to heal from that. Or your soul has to heal, your spirit has to heal. And so there mm -hmm. are, and it's usually a journey and it usually involves people. Yeah. Like we would love our healing to just be between us and God if we don't ever have to talk about it with other people, mm -hmm. right? But Jesus put the church on earth to yes. come and remove your grave clothes. Yes. And that's what the church is here to do, is to remove the grave clothes so that you can go free. And that means you have to uh, open your heart up and allow other people in to minister to you. Wow. So, okay, what would you say to a young lady that's watching right now and she is in so much private pain and so much turmoil and she can't see the light at the end of the tunnel right now and you've just brought her a glimpse of hope. Yes. Can you pray right now yes. for that young woman that's watching or that young man that God would bring the complete total healing power? Yes, yes I would yeah. love to do that. So Lord Jesus, we just pray that um, yes, Holy Spirit, you. that those ones right now that are saying yes. that's me, but yes. I can't I can't speak of it. I don't even know how to take the first step. Mm -hmm. Lord, would you convince them that they're watching this show for a reason because you sovereignly put them before this camera right now yes. and they are hearing your yes. invitation. Yes. Lord, I pray Jesus. that you give them the courage and the grace to take step number one. Mm -hmm. It's just bring, start with just one friend. Start with just confessing it to one friend yes. so that the enemy begins to lose his grip right then. And yes. would you then bring other people into their lives or yes. show them who to go to next. Yes. There is so much help out there, but we have to take the step of courage yes. to take the first step. Yes. I pray this, Lord, for my sisters and brothers yes. listening to me now. In Jesus' In name. In Jesus' name, amen. And I wonder if you are struggling right now and maybe you haven't received forgiveness or maybe you're not forgiving yourself or maybe you're dealing with grief or maybe you're dealing with torment. Will you give us a call at 888-665-4483? Our prayer partners, they're waiting to hook up in faith with you and see victory and breakthrough come to your life because Jesus died. His precious blood was spilt so that you could have life, but life abundantly. Mm -hmm. And I believe like what you're saying, Karen, is that there is hope, yes. there is healing, and there is help through abortion. We're gonna have more with Karen. We're gonna dig a little bit deeper in a moment, but here is Sydney with the good news. Here's your good news for today. Pop superstar Sia made a gospel remake of her hit Elastic Hearts, and it happened at Kanye West Sunday service. Take a listen.
You know, I love to see God move in the music industry like that. You know, this year, Wes has been making headlines for a Sunday service gathering. Now, the service features a gospel choir, prayer, or even encouraging messages at times, but there's actually no sermon. Their service consists of a gospel choir, and Wes says it's simply a spiritual Christian experience. Well, that's all for the good news. Have a great day on Purpose. Boy, that's exciting, man, oh man. Yeah. I know I got a song in my heart. Yeah. Isn't that wonderful? Just that spontaneity of the breaking yeah. out of the Holy Spirit in song. Of pop stars. Mm. Yeah. I mean, we're mm. talking Kanye you, West. I mean, <laughs> I'm thinking, oh my gosh, Kanye West is having a Sunday service. Yeah. I mean, really, Thank tell me God. that that isn't Thank you, God. God moving in the entertainment industry. Yeah, it's so powerful. You know, um, when I found that story, it just, when I was listening, I just got chills in my spine because I remember listening to Sia. So she's not a Christian artist, you know, makes music, just makes very secular music, but the Sunday service that's been going on, he's been having them consistently had wow. it like at Coachella, like 50, like on Easter Sunday and 50,000 people were gathered. Wow. God is moving and he's using whoever he wants. And just to see that, it, um, I was reading too, that Kim Kardashian was like tweeting and said that they were in tears. They literally felt the Holy Spirit moving. I mean, that's incredible. It's amazing how God can use situations. I, I know in, in the past, you know, we have a tendency. I remember light music was a program yeah. that we had here and different times that I would go out, people would say, boy, they play some really strange music on that. And, <laughs> and I would always be quick to defend to say, you don't understand. It's reaching a different crowd and it's changing lives because God is using that in a powerful way. Right. I'm sure you would agree, Tom, that, I mean, we need people in the sports industry. Oh, we do, we do, Reaching we do. the sports. We need people in the entertainment industry That's reaching why God the entertainment. Gives them the platform. We need people in the government. I mean, we need we need Christians That's to right. rise up and to be bold in their faith. That's it. And let people know that. Yes. What were they singing, Sydney? Sing praises unto God. Just mm. praises, yeah. unto, like just declaring His goodness and His greatness in the land. We're going to be right back to talk more with Karen. Stay tuned. We promise to bring you the hope of the gospel. Spreading the gospel has always been a foundation of Cornerstone, and we promise to always share the good news over the airwaves. We promise to touch the lost and hurting hearts. That's the heartbeat of our ministry. Jesus is the only one who brings comfort and healing, and we're continuing with the mission that God gave to Norma Bixler that says, everybody ought to know who Jesus is. We promise to teach God's Word. And when the Holy Spirit is touching your heart, we want to be there with God's Word. God's Word is the foundation that we build our lives, our family, and this ministry on. We promise to broadcast quality Christian programs. Our goal is to inspire you and help you grow in your faith. Through our programs, we will continue to entertain, evangelize, and edify. We promise to lift up the name of Jesus in everything we do, we want to bring glory and honor to our Savior. We promise to raise high His signal to the nations. Our mission is to broadcast the gospel to every generation and to pray for household salvation for every member of your family. happy you're joining us and we are back with Karen Ellison to go deeper into healing the hurting especially those who have dealt with abortion. Karen we're so grateful for you to be here. Thank you ladies I'm happy to be here. Yeah we just want to talk you know what do we do as Christians that we have a friend or somebody that is dealing with the situation is thinking about having an abortion. What advice would you give to us to share with that person? I think I'd start by saying don't be afraid to talk about the subject. No one wants to say the word abortion. No one really wants to talk about it because you're not sure where it's going to lead. And because uh, people feel so strongly about it on one way or another, you know it's not just a casual conversation over a coffee. It's probably something that's going to evoke a lot of deep emotions or opinions. And a lot of times for people who are abortion wounded, um, there is a, there's a hurt little girl or a hurt little boy deep inside there 
but we've uh, put up our defenses, we've hardened our hearts, we've done whatever, because we can't let people see what's really going on because we feel weak, we feel vulnerable, we feel condemned. And so you're, you're either going to have more of a, um, almost like a victim way about you, or you're gonna come out very angry and you're gonna let that be the thing that keeps people away. Wow. But one way or another, as an abortion wounded person who's, who's not healed, you are gonna somehow try to be in control of the conversation. Wow, but how does that conversation start? I mean, you're sitting here with, with, over coffee and you just, mm -hmm. I mean, how do you bring up such a, a, an important subject? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, that's obviously a good question. So you first of all, anytime you always start by saying, Lord, would you bring what's in the heart to come out? Would you cause with the abundance of the heart to come out? I've been in so many conversations where I had, I had no idea that someone was had an abortion involved. It's just almost like the Lord brings it up, like he brought it up and he, oh, wow. more like my responsibility was be ready to respond. Just be ready in season. If I bring this to the light in some way or another, just be ready to not be afraid of the conversation, not get all freaked out about it, but just begin to ask some questions. How's that, how is your heart? How is your heart since you've had your abortion? Or what have you noticed different about your life? Everyone has a before and after abortion story. Mm -hmm. You have what your life was like before, and now you have one as you're getting healed, or if you are healed, it's like, what's your life been after you've received that? Wow. And, um, and, but you know, people actually want to talk about it. People who are abortion wounded, I mean, they're afraid to talk about it, but they've never had anyone really probe very deeply because people are afraid to probe very deeply because yeah. you don't know what you're going to get into and you don't know if you're gonna make matters worse. But if you just follow the lead of the Holy Spirit, He will show you how to gently, but courageously, knock on certain doors and see if they'll open them. That's really good, because I have people that are very near and dear to my heart that would open up and say that they had an abortion and that that's really good you know, advice and wisdom that you're giving us because I think you hear it and then you kind of close up like, oh, I don't know how to respond. But I think the first thing to ask about the condition of our heart. And Karen, I want to ask you too, is you know, from a ministry perspective and like our churches, how, because this is in the forefront right now of our culture, mm -hmm. how as the church are we, should we respond mm -hmm. to you know, women that are in these crisis situations? I know. And I have such a big burden for that. Part of, part of the reason I wrote this book is really for the church and really for pastors and church leaders and ministry leaders. You know, statistics tell us that in the United States, uh, somewhere around 70% of women who have abortions are identifying themselves as Christian. Christians. So if that is true, wow. um, they are in your pew. Wow. And I've had many pastors, you know, over the years say things like, I don't think we have that problem in our church. And, and it's more like there's, it just shows me there's not an awareness. I can guarantee you they're in your church. I can guarantee you they're in your pew, but they're not talking about it. And the one way you're going to help talk about it is that the leadership, the pastors, the elders of the church, you have to say, we're going to talk about this here. This is not a taboo subject here. This is not something that we're going to give condemnation about. We are going to bring this out into the light. You've got to model bringing it into the light and not being afraid of it. That will cause the people to say, okay, okay, there's a step in the right direction. And then as, as a church begins to develop a culture of healing, you know, just, I would just challenge church leaders. Wow. Do you have a culture of healing? Yeah. Is there a place where, you, where people can bring their hidden secrets into the light? Is there a place where you have people to know how to minister to that, how to pray to that, pray for them, how to um, minister to them? And if not, how do you begin to develop a culture of healing? Mm -hmm. And I think one of the ways you begin in a culture of life one of the ways you begin is you gotta have a theology for life. Right. Do you teach about life and what it is to be created in the image of God and what it is to nurture and bring up your children in the things of the Lord and to understand that they are precious. Every single person that the Lord ever allowed to be conceived yeah. was made in His image. So we've gotta start with a theology of life and then we value life. And so then when life is taken, then we have a conviction. We have a conviction about it. Mm -hmm. Like I, I think our churches, churches in a lot of times are so far from conviction because we don't know the truth. Mm -hmm. You've got to know the truth before you can get a conviction about the truth. And so that's my heart for churches is we, we have a lot of work to do. Um, but it, the abortion wounded, where else are they going to go? Right. Where else are they going to go for healing? If they go outside the church, they're just going to find things to numb their pain or they're gonna to try to find some kind of self-atonement or self-help or something along those lines. Only the church has the answer because of Jesus and what Jesus and our relationship with him. 
church is the place where everyone should be able to come and, when, and just say, you know, load me down through the roof and yes. bring me right before Jesus and let me take off your grave clothes. What has the church done in the past that has kept people from telling us their hurts and pains? Well, they've either been silent, which is usually the first thing, or they've taken up uh, an, an understanding that these children that are aborted are actually children, they're babies. And so th they're defending the life of the baby, which is good. But part of what they're leaving out is, well, what about all the people in the wake of that decision? You have the mothers, the mothers that had the abortion, you had the fathers that fathered them, you have grandparents, you have the doctors or nurses that were involved in that. I mean, you have social workers, you have teachers, you have friends. Everyone has their hand in the pot at some some juncture. And so the church needs to bring the all in, say we are all, we as a body, we all have uh, a part in this. Mm -hmm. And we all have to repent for how we've just aligned ourselves with a worldly thinking, a worldly understanding. We all have blood on our hands to some degree or another. And so we're gonna, you know, we're gonna start by repenting for that. Let's just have a repentance service mm -hmm. in our church. And we're gonna be a church that talks about this, but we are gonna bring the love of Christ the grace of Christ, the power of the Holy Spirit to transform people and give people the good news. Like we have the power. Mm -hmm. We have to have the courage to step up and say, we're, this is the, you know, if we're the end times church, this is one of the key battles of the end times church. Mm -hmm. And it's our time yeah. and we've got to step into it. You talk about the theology of life and I love what you wrote in your book. A woman was made to be a life giver and a life nurturer. She's a teacher and a caregiver to her offspring. And abortion is counterintuitive to the nature of what it means to be created as a woman, a wife, a mother, a friend, and one who influences. We're called to create. Yes. We're called to reproduce. We're called to bring life. And that comes right from our creator, right. the Father. That's right. It's exactly how he made us. And then our creator, the Father, he also created men to father, yes. to provide, Amen. to protect, to yes. defend. Yes. And their warrior spirit has been emasculated. Yeah. The warrior your spirit has like they've they've dropped their sword mm. because they no longer feel worthy because they feel there's a sense of failure I failed at what I thought I was supposed to be with the father and until someone says you can pick that sword back up Amen. and we're gonna stand with you and we're gonna build your father's heart back up wow. then the men will come to the forefront and they will lock arms with us this can't be something that women are going to win by ourselves we have to have our brothers uh, lock arms with us we have to do this together Amen. That's really good, Karen, because I love even your book, you talked about restoring the mantle of mother and yes. father, and that's so lost in our society in so many different yes. ways. Yes, that's so true. We call it the mother mantle and the father mantle, because it's really, it, it's just like you're taking on the responsibility, the stewardship mm -hmm. of raising children. And so, so I say, you know, once someone's had an abortion, you don't feel worthy to be a mother, you don't feel worthy to be a father. But even if you never have biological children of your own, there are so many children out there uh, with orphan spirits that you can, you can just love on, you can touch, you can mentor, like you were telling me earlier. You can do things to allow your mothering heart or your fathering heart to come to life and touch those children of the world. And you know, you can have 70 year old orphans Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. People just need a mothering touch and a fathering touch. What are some scriptures that you hang on to or you would share for somebody struggling right now? Mm -hmm. A broken hearted? Mm -hmm. Well, we know that the Lord is near to the broken hearted. Yeah. So you have that promise from God. Yeah. And um, you know, I, I love that one. Even though my mother and father forsake me, the Lord will take me up. Yes. And even if we have forsaken our own children, you can, uh, you know, you can release that back to the Lord. Um, and he will take up your cause and he yes. will minister to you. And we know, again, if we bring the hidden things into the light, confess our sins one mm -hmm. to another, pray for one another that we may be healed. The Lord Jesus Christ, Father God, the Holy Spirit, they are a healing trinity. Amen. They want to heal the brokenhearted. And there is, we, as long as you still have breath, yes. as long as you still have breath, you have an opportunity to receive healing. Yes. So, so good. good. So I just much. know right now that people are being healed and being touched and being restored. Even the message that you're bringing in the scriptures and the thought and even sharing your testimony, Karen, thank you so much mm -hmm. for being open and vulnerable and real and just diving in with a book full of practical help, tips, scriptures, how to make it through. I promise this book is 
is a now book and a now word. Thank you so much. Yes. We appreciate you so much. Let's go to Tom. You know, Acts 2 and 4 describes a significant moment in the life of the first century Christians when they were all filled, 120 of them, filled with the Holy Spirit, given the ability to speak a different language that was not native to them, but it was the language of their hearers. And there were thousands of people who had gathered in Jerusalem for the celebration of Pentecost or the old holiday, the old Jewish holiday of the Feast of Weeks. And they were empowered in the upper room to speak another known language. Verse 5 is a poignant moment in this experience on the day of Pentecost. Verse 5 of Acts 2 says, there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under the heavens. So here are religious people, theologians from all different countries, devout men, devoted to God. They have spiritual ethics in their lives. They have an uplink, an upward link that's working, the uplink. They're connected in some way with God. And when what happened in the upper room was publicized, the language of the Bible is when it was noised abroad, the multitude came together and they were confounded. They were surprised, they were confused. And the thing that surprised them was that every man heard them, the 120, speak in his own language. Wow. And they said, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? These are people from Galilee. They're from Israel. They, they know Aramaic. They know Hebrew. But they are speaking the language of the Persians and the Elamites and the Cyrenians, Cyrenians from Africa, uh, Cappadocia. They are speaking languages that are not known to them. Now, this is significant. If God is going to have the adherents in the upper room to witness to the world, he had to give them the languages of the world so that each of them could speak to the world representing him. Those were known languages. You got that? Known languages. On the day of Pentecost, they spoke known, not unknown languages for the purpose of witnessing. Sometimes we're so busy and more concerned with what the Holy Spirit or the Bible has said than what he is saying. If the church, the contemporary church, is to be effective, then it has to speak a language to our hearers that the hearers understand. And God made that crystal clear on the day of Pentecost. And they were all amazed. Their minds were blown because they said, we hear them, those holy folk, those spirit-filled folk, we hear them talking our language. There's a connection. Have you ever sent a fax and you ever hear that little tone? And when one fax shakes hands, the sending fax machine shakes hands electronically with the receiving fax machine, once they shake hands, the tone goes off and then the message goes through. And that's what God wants to do in the church today. He doesn't want the message to be stymied, stilted, nor stopped because of language barriers, because of culture barriers, because of racial barriers, because of generational barriers, the Holy Spirit bridges all gaps, he bridges all cultures, and he bridges all languages. Oh, this is so beautiful. And then Luke goes on to name the persons who were in the upper room or who were in the audience there in Jerusalem, Parthians and Medes and Elamites, the dwellers of Mesopotamia. So the Holy Spirit reached back to the earliest culture on earth, 
civilization began in Mesopotamia. You remember that from your elementary history classes. Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Asia Minor, Persia, Pamphylia in Egypt. Oh, Egypt is in Africa. So black folk were included on the day of Pentecost. Black folk heard the language of the Holy Spirit. And one of the things, and forgive me for saying this, I don't mean to interject race into my message, but one of the things I'm trying to tell African-American people as a believer is that we need an experience with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit dealt with the folks from Africa, Libya, and Cyrene. Oh, he is all inclusive. Don't you ever think that all inclusive is only a description of a vacation. It is a description of the character of the Holy Spirit himself. He is embracive and inclusive of all humanity. All humanity needs him. And may you be empowered by his presence and power. I'll see you next time. Tomorrow on Real Life, an eyewitness view of hell, heaven, and the afterlife. Laurie Ditto warns us from her life-changing experience. Plus, on hard questions, it's been legalized in some states, so what should the church do? The pastor's comment on the church's stance toward gay marriage. Also, Tom Hollis shares how Cornerstone Cares is making a kingdom difference. That's tomorrow on Real Life. Aren't you thankful for the Holy Spirit in our lives and at work in our lives? And you know what? He was at work in this very program today. I love the interview with Karen just talking about healing the hurt that won't heal. And can I just read to you a scripture that I believe is for you today, Isaiah 61. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. Are you brokenhearted today? Has something happened in your life that has been holding you captive for years, like 30 years? It's time to break through. It's time to walk into forgiveness. It's time to walk into freedom, to proclaim freedom for the captives, release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. But he doesn't stop there. He wants to bestow upon us a crown of beauty instead of ashes, an oil of gladness or joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise for a spirit of heaviness or despair. And brother or sister, I'm praying with you and for you right now. I'm going to ask you to make a life-changing decision. Like right now is your time. Today is the day of salvation. Salvation. Today is the day to stop everything, quit putting it off, and to ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart, to be the Lord and the Savior of your life. He will set you free. He will heal your broken heart. Just pray this prayer. Just say, Father God, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. Be the Lord and the Savior of my life. I thank you that I'm free. I thank you that I have joy. I thank you that no more despair, no more despondency. I'm free in Jesus' name, amen. And if you prayed that prayer, call us at 888-665-4483. Jesus came to set the captives free. Mm. Do you know what? I can't stop singing in this hour. I really can't. I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my pain. I'm trading them all. I'm laying it down for the joy of the Lord. Man, we hope you know that's true. Please stop believing the lie of the devil. I, so many people that I have a chance to meet, you can just see it in their eyes that yes. they just don't take it personally. Yeah. They just don't realize. And maybe you're one of those watching this program today and you're thinking to yourself, I don't even know why I tuned into this, but I stayed here for this whole hour.
Well, it was because God wanted to share with you a truth that'll change your life for eternity. You can have a blessed assurance. And I want you to know that he sent his son into this world to die, to, to pay for your sin, to pay for my sin. He knew you by name and he has a perfect plan for your life. You don't have to be in defeat. You don't have to be in despair. You don't have to live insecure. You don't have to be back on your heels, feeling as though life goes on without any control. God has saved you. God has paid a price for you. God knows you by name. That's so good. You know, just as you were talking, Tom, I just kept on Thank hearing you. God talking about abortion, abortion. And if you're right there out there right now and yes. you're thinking and you're contemplating about abortion, or you had an abortion, I just want to encourage you and let you know that that is, doesn't matter what happened or mm. the circumstances that Jesus' blood is over you, yes. that he loves you. And if you're thinking about one, I just really, I just kept hearing God say abortion in my spirit, that we have um, a partner that we're connected to that's here in the city of Pittsburgh, that if you need help, if you need to connect with someone, call us because we have, you know, people you can connect with that will connect you with this ministry that we partner with that helps women that are in crisis situations. So I just want to encourage you today. Mm, thank you. Karen, it was just so powerful what, what, what God has shared. I, I said to you as we were praying before this hour, I, I said to you and our producer John said to you that there's, there's just an anointing on you and we praise God for the power that God has given you to be able to, to share this message and, and bring light into a darkness. That's been your experience. You see a lot of women that are, that are still in that darkness. That's absolutely right. And if, I, if I'm allowed to share our website address, Please. Uh, it's www.godeeperstill.org. Okay. Go mm. Godeeperstill.org. If you get on there, you can see a list of retreats. We do healing retreats. And we have chapters around, we have 13 chapters around the country that might be closer to where you live. And you can find, and our retreats are free of charge. Wow. So you can come and you can experience the Lord firsthand uh, touching you deeply, so. Wow. Yeah. We'll put a link uh, to okay. your site on the CTVN site. So if you come to Cornerstone, if you forget that address, we'll be happy to, to connect you with this, yeah. with this wonderful ministry. Well, we've been blessed and so many have called in and, 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 and even the bigger picture beyond the abortion, just people that have just been meshed and imprisoned by their insecurity and the lack of forgiving themselves. Yes. And, and, and Karen, it, it's very appropriate. I'd like you to, to, to lead us in prayer for all of those of you have, who have called in. Thank you, Lord. Father, thank you for those who took the step who took the first step, but I know it was hard to pick up the phone and it was hard to dial the number and then to even talk on the other end. But I thank you, Lord, that you gave grace. And Lord, for every person here who has uh, cried out, uh, Lord, I ask that you would meet them right where they're at. Lord, I pray for every person watching this show. Lord, whether they've directly had an abortion or maybe they helped or encouraged someone to, or they're, they're feeling the weight of it. Lord, it's, it's for them too. So Lord, you know where people are and we just ask you, we plead the blood of Jesus over these requests, over these heart cries. Lord, would you meet the need? Would you reveal yourself? And would you confirm over and over again that you're the one pursuing them? You're just asking them to surrender and come home. So Lord, I do pray for this, Lord. I pray for your blessing on this and on this network. Jesus. In Jesus name, amen. We began this hour about the happiness for those whose guilt has been forgiven and the joy whose sins have been covered over. And they are, please know that they are, that God has paid a tremendous price for your soul and my soul. Praise be to God. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you, and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.